Nintendo's going to sue somebody just out of like <laughs> reflex reaction. <Yeah. laughs> Nintendo's like, no, stop it. Just, yeah. not, just stop doing that. In I know it's we, not we our property. I know it's not our thing. Just stop. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. This show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, Whatever the hell else we come up with, I'm Old Man Vin, joined every week by Jordan Swag and Pedro Mateus, and you, watching us live on Twitch and the YouTubes, probably got some new people tuned in tonight, and they're like, hey, talk about snaps again so we can get angry. Stick around for the hate mail segment on that, but you <laughs> are helping us form cocaine, Voltron. Gentlemen, what's new? We were talking in the pre-pre-super shows about a bunch of stuff. I've been doing a lot of, um, learning. Learning um, web development, I guess you would call it. I, I've been bits and pieces. One thing I have learned, man, people think a lot of their WordPress plugins. Okay? Not every WordPress plugin needs a pro version, which I don't have a problem buying your pro version unless you're trying to charge me a subscription for a WordPress plugin. Get out of here, <laughs> you damn clown. Um... But yeah, I've been working on making like little dynamic bar charts and pulling that off. Try to keep everything nice and organized instead of doing this, you know, very modern thing like doing it in Gap and making it and busting it out to different images. Having a fun time doing that. Not really a fun time, but I did get a sound card that rebooted my PC. That was kind of fascinating. And it's not like Pedro, we were talking about that in the pre show. You know, it was like maybe a hardware fault. And I'm like, I thought about that. I put an Opinion 4 and it just booted right up. After, after you installed Debian on it. <laughs> and I tried to install Debian on it, and Debian turned red. But yeah, go back and listen to the live and uncut version of this show if you want to taste that. How about you, Jordan Swang? You've been busy this week, man. Oh, man, it's just been all work shit all the time. Got a new guy on the team that we're onboarding. But I get to, and I get to fight with uh, Samuel. You, yeah, they're, they're, there's, all, there's always fun times. When Is that like applic- sassy YAML? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, you know, it it, it, give, it gives me sassy shit like throwing 404s on the URL that it told me to provide to the identity provider. So I'm, I lo- love <laughs> love seeing that shit. Um, yeah, no. So be, be, beyond that, it's been pretty low key. Uh, Pedro, what about you? Do you have anything exciting? Because I sure as hell don't. Uh, not particularly. No. Uh, I think uh, most exciting let, is. Uh, I... let, let, let's try to out dull each other then. What was the most <laughs> dull thing that you did this week? Okay. Okay. Uh, I I am pondering switching my Linux distribution again. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I've gotten to the point with Nobara where it's it's great if you don't mind the um, Manjaro like experience of. There's an update coming. I wonder which package is going to break. Uh, <laughs> So it's, yeah, it, uh, it, it's happened a couple of times, and some of the decisions, again, matter, nothing but mad respect for Eggy. Major but, Mateus, uh, this is the price you pay to live on the edge. Yeah, to a point, and I'm not saying that Manjaro is bad, I'm just saying it takes a special kind of person to enjoy that adventure of running an operating system, so I think I'm just going to go to Fedora. <laughs> I, I like watching my boys get old, but like, I, I, stable oh. operating system, see, man, there might be something to them. Hmm. I, 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 I got something dull and stupid. I just, I just remember. All right, all right. We went, we, we went to, we went to a all-you-can-eat sushi place. Uh, but for, that doesn't uh, sound like a good idea. Just in general. It was I mean, a okay, idea. Yeah, initially, you're like, yeah, it sounds great. I'm like, mm, maybe not. Oh, the, 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 the food was really good, but it was being served by one of these automated sushi robots that will, like, roll up to your roll up to your table with a bunch of trays and will squeak at you like a fucking tachikoma uh, and in, like, the exact same pitch, too. And it made me want to kick it, but um, <laughs> I, I, but it had my food, so I, 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 I thought better of it. But uh, what, what happened was, on its way to deliver our food, there was like a wet floor sign on the floor and it has the cameras to like not bump into people. So it's like obstruction detected, obstruction detected, obstruction detected. <laughs> and it's little fucking Tachikoma voice. And the person standing next to the sign like keeps nudging it like a millimeter is like, is this going to fix it? I'm like, fucking moron. Until eventually <laughs> one of the waitresses showed up and moved the sign like an actual like distance away. And then it zoomed up to my table. 
Oh. <laughs> said, here's your fucking teriyaki chicken. Um, I thought yeah, it was that, that, like a, a mechanical, like nervous breakdown. It starts screaming. Oil starts I was leaking. expecting it to smoke, start smoking no. or like doing, I, 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 I was doing the. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, this is like, this, this is the rise of the fucking machines, man. This is how, this is how they snap and kill us. Like, can, I, can I get my sushi before you take me yeah. out? Yeah. <laughs> There, can there. never get the horse to eat healthy, though. No, the horse just insists on eating Wendy's and nothing but Wendy's. <laughs> it's very, very weird. It's the steam. New version of Proton. Woohoo! It is time for the yield Proton Experimental Roundup, where they take all the shit that was in that they're slowly adding to the Proton Experimental Change Log and not like really marking what it is, and finally moving it over to uh to uh mainline proton so we got a couple new games playable red tide runner grotesque tactics evil heroes prince land assassin's creed mirage simon the sorcerer uh there was that Baldur's gate fix that was really really nice because now you don't have to go in and delete game files to make the game bypass a check in order to uh in order to actually launch there's an elite dangerous fix and i wrote in the show notes will it launch on my system and i completely ADD'd about this i remembered i wrote this down now <laughs> as i'm reading it so we don't know <laughs> Um, yeah, but, uh, new, new version of Proton comes out. Uh, so, you know, report your bugs. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it continues to add features support for games. Gotta love it. Yeah. I, I was looking through the notes and I saw a bunch of Final Fantasy fixes. There's fixes for Final Fantasy 13, which I keep forgetting those games exist. Uh, 10 and 10 2. Uh, and also Final Fantasy 8, they've improved the audio and, I streamed Final Fantasy VIII at one point, and I remember the audio was a little bit crunchy, so I had to keep the music turned down. Uh, so I wonder if, if now I can actually play it without sounding extra crunchy. Eh, that'd be nice. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, when I see these big updates, I always think a lot like with one updates. I use them as an excuse to like do a bit of archaeology on games that you've never heard of, right? You, you, mm -hmm. I, there was some Nickelodeon game in this, I think. And I was like, what is that? And there's this like, NASCAR five. I'm like, there's five NASCAR games. What's going on? And they fixed the video playback and out of war. And I don't even know what an out of war is, but Hey man, it's big. It's always good. To, um, <laughs> but every now and then I go on a little adventure, you know, it's like Google search. Like, what is this? I haven't run across anything. I'm like, I can't believe I missed this yet, but Hey, one day it's gonna happen. Project cars is up to number three, by the way. And still, no, <laughs> or, I don't even mention that anymore. <laughs> ah, man, Pedro Mate, it's one thing you might have noticed this week. If you've been playing video games on your Steam Deck, Proton, or just on your Linux box, is, uh, there, there was a small problem with it. Right? There was a little bit of a snafu. It, it actually started a couple of weeks back when uh, Capcom won my, personally, my last hope of uh, a AAA games publisher that wasn't, an, you know, a complete dick uh well they introduced enigma protector to i don't know I, I think it's part of their stupid campaign against mods after the naked chun li incident uh and uh the first one was resident evil revelations and um people that they review bombed it until they retracted the drm from that game and then having learned nothing capcom introduced Monster Hunter Rise to Enigma Protector, or the other way around, as the case may be. And uh, yeah, that broke the game on Steam Deck. And uh, Pierre Le Prefet has decided, you know what, let's fix that. He posted on Twitter to say that a Proton hotfix is now available, so if you download the hotfix version of Proton on Steam and set that to run Monster Hunter Rise, you can play it on the Steam Deck and regular desktop Linux again, which is very good, which is very good. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do a little bit of a dance, you know, it's not right out of the box to get it fixed, but I think this was very important to, um, for this to happen, because mm -hmm. this sent a very clear data point to all of us that Capcom does not consider the Steam Deck uh, a large enough target to QA against before pushing this stuff out. At least, at least, for, uh, at least for their multiplayer games, maybe for something like Resident Evil, um, or like the, the, the big like, single-player drops, but definitely, yeah. Um, it, it's it's the unfortunate reality we got to deal with with a lot of the the support load being taken on by Valve and Proton, right? They're just like just because it's the the sales pitch is just trust us, it's going to work, and then sometimes it don't. 
And it's it's not just a Steam Deck, it is being affected. People on Windows have reported that the game is now considerably more demanding on system resources, and it's mm. actively breaking a lot of mods that people like to use. So it's, yeah, if you look at the Steam reviews, you'll see that the uh, the review bombs haven't stopped. They've yeah, slowed turn, down a little bit, but they haven't stopped. <laughs> turn, turns out having a monitoring process that has to intercept every single call that your system makes will make your software run worse in some situations. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Man, I, I don't know. I mean, making it... What are our thoughts on like retroactively going back and adding? Because I, I just like... That should be grounds for like instantaneous refund for me. You know, I have a... I bought Monster Hunter World when it was on like... It was like a buck or something like that. And like maybe I can get into way too grindy for me. But, you know, if I come to find out, like, I can't play this game anymore. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we're keeping you safe. From what? <laughs> Ink cartridges? Like <laughs> Naked Chun-Li mods. That's oh. what they're, they're keeping you safe from. <laughs> and I, I, I think what? The, de the devil's advocate <laughs> argument is like, oh, well, you know, if a game gets very popular and all of a sudden people start cheating, they're going to need to have some sort of mitigation in place. But, I mean, yeah, now, who, who's cheating on Monster, Monster Hunter rise or whatever right Th th that's the thing i can see monster hunter rise because it does have the multiplayer element and you do get to interact with other players i can see the cheating happening there <laughs> but resident evil revelations is a single player game that was released nine years ago mm -hmm. something like that Dude, the you, fuck? You Why? Never, you never know when these Chun Li mods are going to show up, Pedro. All right. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In, instead of instead of Nemesis, it's just naked Chun Li. And honestly, I would play that game. I would play that game so much. One of the interesting things about Valve is they're a private company. I don't know. We no one really knows how much money they got kicking around. We joke about it. You know, they clearly had enough money to walk up to AMD's door, kick it in, and say, "Print us a custom chip." That's not cheap. No, they, they were able to flash some cash around. But we, we get like little hints at the type of money Bell has. <laughs> and that brings us to this from CSGO Tracker, which I, I appreciate how they've done this on their website. They're like, F it, man. Here's just a PDF directly embedded into the site. Knock yourself out, kids. This is from the 2023 year in review. Something that caught my eye. You know, CSGO, not really my gem, but I appreciate that a lot of people still play it and you know it runs on linux reasonably well there was a little thing in here 400 million cases because you get little skins and cases and stuff you know cosmetics and counter-strike too so you know in like in september back in september they did like a big boom with you know new people jumped in the game because they redid you know they reworked stuff in counter-strike it was kind of fun but here's the number though here's the number just for 20 23 to wrap your heads around valve made 980 million hashtag is, pinky finger dollars just just on skins that is almost a billion dollars that almost. is that is insane <laughs> that, that is like, redefining the whole having some skin in the game <laughs> idea <laughs> pedro that was actually good i hate you yeah, <laughs> that is uh, all. Yeah, almost a billion dollars for skits. skins. Fuck and one game. Skins, just a single game. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you. They can literally just give give the fucking game away. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They, <laughs> they do give it away, right? Yeah, like, dude. Yeah. And, also, also, CS:GO players really want to shoot people on a Wednesday, on mm -hmm. Wednesday nights. That's 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 when they want to kill. Um, but yeah. Yeah, again, though, I, I just can't get away from that fucking number. Like, that's po point, point zero nine eight billion. That, that tiny little data point and it, it made me just sit back and, like, that is just such a fraction of the amount Valve pulls in. Yeah, because this yeah, is that, just that's the one, one game that they make. Uh, imagine all the TF2 100,000 games on Steam. <laughs> Ima imagine if Artifact took off. Oh, man. <laughs> they would have been rolling in it. <sighs> 980 billion million dollars on just skins so you know i think it, it's probably safe for us to sit back and go we're we're, we're gonna get that steam deck too yeah <laughs> yeah maybe even that, a new steam machine they, they got money to play around but maybe it takes that type of money you know 
Well, I, I mean, may, may, maybe if you want to port your your new games to your old engines or your old games to your new engines. Yeah, can I get some skins for Gold Source One? I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I, we 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 got we got Crazy Ivan. We got from the Half Life Twin uh, anniversary <laughs> update. Yeah, uh, but this is okay. We we fu- this is just fucking weird. This is weird. okay. Thank you. Weird. That's a weird. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah th- th- this is this is what it is. One hundred percent weird. We're in the news game segment. We're talking about Black Mesa Mesa Classic, which is remaking Black Mesa. But in Half-Life 1, in Gold Surfs, this is the Ouroboros. This is the snake eating its own tail. Where, Black, if you don't know, if you've been living under a rock or have, this is the first time you've listened to this podcast, Black Mesa is the re-implementation of Half-Life or Half-Life 1 on the Half-Life 2 engine. And there's a bunch of quality of life upgrades. They redid a bunch of the levels to have more modern design. Uh, uh, on a rail is a lot shorter, that kind of stuff. So... The guys are like, yeah, that's great, but we don't want to play this in Half-Life 2. We want to bring this back to the OG. So now they're they're porting back all of these changes to the first Half-Life. I think it's just wonderfully twisted. That's Ugh. pretty meta. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, no, that, that that that's crossed beyond its own being and gone back to the start of it all, which You've created Why? a time paradox, Pedro. <laughs> it's a time paradox. Gentlemen, I mean, shit like this is going to confuse futurologist uh, archaeologists. Yes. yes, it uh, is. Like, what came first? But, but, so, Wait, so, so are, but are we going to get, are we going to get the Gold Source remake in Source 2? <laughs> so they're, they're remaking, uh, they're, they're going to remake Black Mesa Classic. In, in, in Source 2. What do we even call this, though? A re-demake? A de-remake? Dreamake, guy. Dreamake, yes. Dreamake. <laughs> man, this is this is some Nintendo's going to sue somebody just out of like reflex reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo's like, no, stop it. Just, yeah, no, no, just stop doing that. In I know it's we, not we our property. Approve. I know it's not our thing. Just stop. Yeah. Just don't. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like a little jerk reaction. Like, oh, why, why, why are we getting assistance from Nintendo? We're like, I, we, this, we just do this when things yeah. get remade. It's weird. We can't help it. <laughs> I kind of want to play it, though. I still got to finish Black Mesa. I, I guess you got to get a either either restart or figure out a way out of that one fuck corner, huh? I know, guys. <laughs> Doof. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Dungeons and Robots. A brand yeah. new game. Came out in January 23rd, 2024, indeed. Uh, but if you have the uh, Steam DB uh, plugin for Firefox you, or Chrome or whatever, uh, you will see that the last time that the depots were updated was 2,050 days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Those depots were uh, updated at some point in 2018 and never again. And the game is now out and it's got it's come out to mixed reviews. Honestly, I'm very confused. <laughs> like I, this whole thing, it looks like Force in the, the game if you remember Force or Force Showdown, it, it it's very much that isometric twin stick shooter it, it, type it, it, of it's, situation. It's Diablo. It, it it it's it's what new Diablo is these days. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, no, it's um it's weird. It's really weird. <laughs> I was looking at it, and I mean it looked like Dungeons and Robots. Like that sounds like Warhammer-ish type of thing. And you're looking at the video, I think the video is in 30 FPS, but uh hey, it might be old and might have not been updated in thousands of days. But it's got online co-op, which is more than I can say for the other two games I was going to give a mention this week that had one and <laughs> had local only, and the other one was like it. Has co op with remote it's got play. crafting. <laughs> what is it? Uh, yeah, that's what it says it is. It's action RPG, one to four players. And uh, there it is, brand new. And it, uh, dude, that was even a penguin in the uh, yeah. trailer yeah. there at the end. I saw that. Tried to sneak that by me. And it's robots. And it is 539. And it's got mixed reviews because of. App- apparently, this, w- this was sitting on, in whatever state it was in for a couple of years and someone's like oh we should probably release this how and many so times they, have we seen that though like in, i don't think we've ever seen anything quite as egregious okay, as the this lag one. on this one was pretty bad yeah, yeah because this one all the reviews are saying yeah don't purchase this because the dev hasn't touched the game since the first early access version mm. but like these these are reviews from like years ago as well yeah so like <laughs> so you're, you're and, sitting and, and yeah, the game trying, hasn't like 
is this just the developer like fuck around and find out right and it's like yeah, well, might like, as well just go ahead and take it out of early access i'm yeah. done working on it yeah. it's done I, I i think it's very much the case of yeah i'm never going to do what i wanted to do with this so fuck it it's not an early access anymore and i'm not, <laughs> not even updating the game to remove probably the text in game that says early access version uh, <laughs> i mean we have seen that how many days you know not not with such a like lag point between initial release, but we've seen multiple times where one point has just been slapped on something like whatever just oh, yeah. push it out and it's done mm -hmm. that's unfortunate uh yeah so yeah vote with your wallets kids a little bit of news this week uh everybody's favorite uh video card manufacturer you know you love them even Linus, Matrox? He's Matrox? Yeah. <laughs> Matrox buys all their shit from AMD, so shut up, you traitor. <laughs> Poor Matrox. That's just rebadged AMD stuff now. Old AMD stuff now. Uh, we are talking about Team Green NVIDIA drivers. They're out. I'm running them right now, which, all right. But then again, it's NVIDIA drivers. There's no surprise. Even the latest beta runs smooth enough. But uh, a couple of things in here. They fixed a couple of intermittent ZIT errors for Horizon Zero Dawn, Metro Exodus, Forza Horizon 5, and Halo Infinite. That's just, you know, log spam that you might have to worry about. They've added support for the NVIDIA VDPAU for XYLIN, which is neat. That's the video acceleration silicon sitting on your NVIDIA GPU, if you get one laying around. And they fixed a bug that prevented GameScope from running when using the NVIDIA Open GPU kernel modules. Like, good on you guys. But this is a pretty chunky little update. A lot of it seems to be copy pasted from a previous one, doesn't it? Uh, like this is like the comp, you know, what we were talking about. This is the Proton equivalent of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just added a new one, but they didn't even embolden the text on it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it so. make, makes it a little hard to pick out what, what actually got changed. I saw someone in the Reddit thread actually like went through and bolted it for for us, <laughs> which, which 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 you know I pr appreciate that. Um, but man, uh, th this is what Pedro's going to bring up. This is good. These, these drivers go all the way back to the 900 series, right? Yeah, uh, the, it's Maxwell. Uh, they have like the the very first line is fixed an issue that sometimes caused bail and applications to run in less than one frame per second on Maxwell, Volta, and Pascal. It's like oh. Maxwell Volta, I can see them supporting because the Titan V was a five thousand dollar video card. Mm -hmm. But uh, Maxwell and Pascal fixes too. Uh, Maxwell is probably going to be deprecated this year if their usual cadence is anything to go by. They're going to release a uh, new generation this year, and they're going to drop Maxwell off the uh, the drivers. But yeah, you for now they still NVIDIA support some credit. Oh man, <laughs> the engineering required to have that stack up and working compatible with that many generations of cards and you just download one file, run file and it works. Yeah. <laughs> that was always the thing that they had over AMD because AMD, and we've seen it again recently because they dropped Vega mm -hmm. from the proprietary drivers and they're still releasing products with Vega GPUs in them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the the, the 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 nice thing too with these these Nvidia releases is, is a lot of these are just coming with Wayland fix after Wayland fix after Wayland fix. It seems it seems like it's happening. The the Red Hat's big old push to like uh, get get uh, Wayland be being in mainline by like what Rel ten uh, seems to be on schedule. So you know it's it's good it's good to see we're 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 inching towards that future. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty six is right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, don't worry next. Dude, I got to think about like, in, like where, where's NVIDIA going? Because they, they've basically just did like the big uh, parade of fuck you with the Super Series. Mm -hmm. Like these, these are only a good value card in light of like the horrible value of all the 40 series previous. that we've released. Right. Right. Like, all the previous cards that we released. Now, now we've released the decent one. Right. right. Only under yeah, this. The 2000 lens. series was bad. The 3000 series. Eh. Three, yeah, for, okay, uh, the 3000 series was unavailable. Yes. <laughs> By all uh, intents and like, purposes. I don't have a 3060, <laughs> Pedro. I have an EVGA collector's item. <laughs> especially well, an EVGA. Yeah, yeah, especially EVGA, right? <laughs> In, but yeah, NVIDIA no, uh, treated them so bad that they're just like, we're not going to make video cards but anymore. Though. Now, how dumb of a decision does it look like, you know, when they pulled all this? Well, like, there's going to be no margin. For NVIDIA cards right now, probably AMD's not that much better, but at least AMD 
but then AMD does the thing where they release something in 10 minutes later after everyone, you know, the FOMO buys, they're like, and we're going to cut the price. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's both CPUs and GPUs on AMD. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it, I, I will say one thing. I'm genuinely surprised that it didn't take as long as I thought it would for NVIDIA to just find whatever will fix the Wayland thing. <laughs> Apparently it's a Because I genuinely hope, uh, I, I, I was thinking that it was going to take them far longer than it did. <laughs> well, they're dragging ass. You know, they're, they're still, like, that part of NVIDIA, like, we wanted to do, our, do it our way. But, you know, we you they're trying now like i don't think it's an engineering problem they're just like we'll just get around to it because there's not a fucking demand for wayland on the desktop on desktop linux i mean come on that's desktop linux as a whole period the the, the only thing there there would be demand for is already running an amd chip so <laughs> and, and yeah it, it, it's, it's gonna be laptops tablets all that stuff but yeah i mean well i mean they're selling to like their enterprise you know corporations yeah. customers like that's the linux desktop they give it m on that. right right and, yeah. and and that's like disney animation workstation that's right so, x that's so, all for, 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 well for now until uh, now now that they're uh now that they're putting out a bunch of these wayland fixes i think a lot of these software are going to move yeah 10 15 years 100 percent Let's talk about oh. launching Olga Wiggle. Yes, that's that's how you pronounce it. This is the latest uh, initiative from Mr. Glorious Eggroll. And it's... We, we got to work out a name for it. Olga No. You just make it. Just make a turkey noise. Uh, but th so this, this is it's Garfield minus Garfield. It's Proton minus Valve, sort of. So it uses the Steam uh, Soldier runtime, and it uses Proton, but the goal here is to create a standardized entry point for launching Windows games on Linux. Um, so this basically takes out uh, all of the requirements for Steam to launch games via Proton, and re uh, reverse engineers all the environment variables and stuff that are being set to configure the runtime, and wraps around it. And the benefit here is this is now a single entry point. You can have stuff like centralized Proton fixes that can be pulled from an online database and not necessarily have to be packaged with your uh, with your launcher. Uh, and again, it, again, it just creates a more stable interface here. Um, it can. The other goal here is to abstract uh, games away from the store it was purchased on. So you can use the Steam config for like an Epic Game Store version and a Steam version of the game, and maybe even have a facility for bringing your saves over. Because that's a big annoying thing is if you get a game for free on Epic and then you want to play with your friends on Steam, you got to copy. All, you got to figure out a way to like deal with your save games. Uh, I'm looking at you, Shadow Warrior too. Um, <laughs> but not having to actually require Steam just the just the runtimes themselves mean that this can be made a little bit more portable. It's 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 interesting. Uh, it's interesting, and I hope to see where this is going to be going. We, based a little bit of spoilers for our hate mail segment. Apparently, uh, Lutris is working on integrating this kind of thing already. Yes, and, and uh, if you're anything like me, you're probably shouting XKCD nine two seven at the screen right now. But uh, <laughs> it makes sense. I, I it absolutely makes sense because if you think about it, Lutris launches games a certain way, heroic or legendary i think technically it's legendary heroic is the good uh, whatever uh heroic launches the game a different way um bottles launches the game an entirely different way and they're all technically just launching a game with wine looters can do more obviously but it for the sake of example this is for wine specifically i, I, um, I only use play on linux <laughs> you can still use that it's still being actively developed very slowly but it's still being actively developed uh but if all of these launchers have one way that they all launch wine games and they have their grand unification moment it probably is a good thing for everyone involved because they then they can focus on whatever grand vision they happen to have going on and just develop that instead of having to worry about keeping the basic functionality of being able to launch a game with wine working so this is good this is very good <laughs> let me tell you what this is let me tell you what this is this is a fuck mothering steam play button for wine and it's glorious it's amazing because that's one of the biggest boons for linux gaming period man that's one thing valve got so right that everybody was not seeing the forest for the trees, you know, 
yeah, we like playing around with stuff. We like all the ops and stuff, but the vast majority of people just want to play the damn game. They want to click a play button. And Valve made that very simple. Go, no go. Stop, fail. And that's going to bring this to one, man. I mean, this is just going to let launchers implement the equivalent of a Steam play button backed by all that knowledge that we've accumulated over this time, man. No cocking about with these per game screen. You still can. You still can if you want to play the mini game. The stay home, you know, the mini boss before you get into the game proper. I used to be that person too. You know, I enjoyed getting a game up and running. Like, did you play the game? Like, no, but I got it running, man. It was pretty dope. And so, like, that's one of the reasons I personally. I have really never messed around much with Lutris, Heroic, and the alternate launchers you play on Linux back in the day, or even um, Wine Tricks too much. I've, I lost interest in that. I got to the point to where I just want to play them game, and I'm very spoiled now by that system and the Steam client. If I click play, maybe I'm going to enter a few moon glyphs into the launch commands. Maybe I need to enable, you know, whatever, DX12. That's fine. And bringing that experience to the other launchers is really good because I have games on other stores. You know, outside of Steam, I have all those mystery games on GOG that keep growing them <laughs> and other places and all those epic games. And uh, being tied into ProtonDB, this is great. Plus, you got to think, how much easier is this going to make life for people with Steam decks? Because that is one place you do not want to be fucking around with scripts and launch commands. And, and, and to, to your point, I think like the, the Steam Deck is, is the proof in the pudding about like the magic of the play button. They had to get you, that play button working before the Steam Deck could exist. Right. Mm-hmm. But, but, but even now, everyone fucking loves that like, hey, I bought my Steam Deck. I can play my computer game. I press go and it mm-hmm. just fucking works on these Windows handhelds. They can't even make that claim most of the time, which is, which is, which is kind of kind of fucked up games, if you think about it. Windows games aren't running on the Windows handheld computer. But they run on the Steam Deck. That, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, spreading this out and like for for even even for outside of games, like non Windows or non Linux native applications that just now have an easy way of working. Stuff like Photoshop has always been a pain to get up and running under Linux. Mm-hmm. Imagine if there was just an easy play button for mm-hmm. that. That's and what we th- need. This this is the this is the foundation. This is the grain uh, groundwork for for all of that. So yeah. I, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I, when I was first reading, I was like, hey, yes. And I'm like, oh, do we need another thing? I'm like, oh, no, this is the thing we need. Everything needs this thing. Yes. Th- th- mm-hmm. This identified a shortcoming in all of the other solutions. Yeah. Everybody says, was like, we hey, have fixed this for you. Lipstick on a pig, man. You can make your store look great and your launcher and all that. But like that core thing, that's what Valve got that everybody else was missing was that barrier to entry that just, oh, I just click the thing and it runs. I'm like, done. Mm hmm. And if you look at the contributors list, you might see, besides uh, Eggy, you might see another familiar face. One uh, Matthew Commandel <laughs> has already started contributing to uh, Pedro. We've, 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 we're, we're not going to hold that against the project. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in the week when I looked, it was, uh, it was Glorious Egg Roll and Moiken. Uh, it was like the two of them. And now there's also... Uh, a Strycore and a Reza FR33. <laughs> Keep doing the good work. We need this. Um, love to see it. Love to see it. Now, up next is uh, Gado is back in the news because uh, they're switching things up a little bit. Well, not well, them direct. Not, not, not them, but some Gado friends. Some, some friends of Gado that were waiting for them to get their shit together so they can make some Switch games. They got together on the Nintendo forums and they hacked together a version of Gado that can run that can export to the Nintendo Switch. Now, this is by no means a replacement for a W4 contract. If you want to actually like have your game ported to Switch and run well, you probably want to use that. This uh, is mostly a project made by developers trying to expand support of Godot for their console of choice. Right now, it only supports games written purely in GD script. If you want to like have C sharp functionality, you basically need to transpile it to like a module. That's my understanding of it. And like actually import it into Godot natively there. Um, and they're not making any claims about this is going to run super well, but for simple games and for indie games, this is good enough to get your game running on a Switch and being able to be sold on the Nintendo Store. So that's nice. It's good to see. Well, I, I like the idea of it, uh, being able to throw it out, because, like, 
this, this will give you some idea what's going on instead of just completely handing it over to a black box company. Mm-hmm. Support your game, you know, you can get, get, just get a feel for it. Like, hey, is this even going to be feasible to uh, like get my game up and running on the Switch? This will give you that taste. And yeah, like you said, it's not going to be optimized and great, but I mean, this is the real thing, you know, this is authorized Nintendo Switch developers have put this Godot port together for the Switch. So, I mean, you're at least going to know, like, if you should go down that path. Yeah. It, it, it will function. Whether or not it will work well is to be determined. <laughs> yeah. And they, they are very quick to point out, it's like, no support provided. This is as is. If you can get it to run, great. You still need access to the Nintendo developer portal, obviously. Uh, if you're going to be publishing your game on the Switch, you have to have access to it. So, eh. uh, But yeah, no, it's a very much community support type of situation. So be careful. <laughs> But, it's like, but again, this, this, this is part of the Godot community, like, coalescing. Mm-hmm. I think we're, we're, there's still, like, a massive wound in the game dev community from, like, Unity shit from, last, early, or from late last year, right? There, there's are, the wound, but, like, even they make the point here, uh, which, yeah. you know, they're, they're right to do. And they're like, hey, you don't have an excuse. You know, I don't yeah. want to hear the no switch excuse. That, that's not the real excuse. Excuse is they already know how to use Unity. Yeah, yeah. So, but, 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 yeah, and like, but ha- ha- having tools like this and building up the support network because that was the big thing Unity had was it had brain share and it had experience. So now, now we need to move this over to Godot, and it, this again, this is this is good foundational steps for that. And you need to be thinking about that because if Unity's around in another two or three years, I'd be surprised in their current he, form, man. Even even then, I think like this, it was a, it's a wake up call to all the game devs, like. Make sure that like your make sure that your choice of engine will support you long term, and if that means going with an open source route, um, well, I don't necessarily want to blame devs like up to that point because Unity was like a pretty good like member of the game engine community up until like right because they taught a lot of people like what. Mm-hmm. But 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 again, like open source projects don't have that incentive to ser- to uh, aggressively change licensing for the sake of pulling in more money. Right. Uh, I think it's 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 more it's more the the incentive structure there. And that's don't, why you, you should use Epic. Yes, Unreal absolutely. Un- Unreal Engine Five, baby. Or, or what? L- Lumberyard. Lumberyard. Or, or <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the Amazon uh, Crytek. Well, no, yeah. well, now, now, now the Linux Foundation owns, owns it. It's like the Linux game engine or something, Or something right? even dumber, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, geez. Jeez. Leadworks, baby. That's Ledworks. what we need. Bring it oh, back. Oh, man. Bring it back. <laughs> is it still around? I wonder if Leadworks is still around. I, I don't know. Is the air, action, I, Captain. <laughs> dude, ever, we're going to bring that up, and, like, Terry's going to get an email. He's like, oh, yeah, I still watch you guys. Yeah, it's like, like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Hey, man, if you want to build your own game engine, do it. Um, capitalism. Venture. Ma- yeah, maybe don't uh, don't get into venture capital if you want to fund your uh, indie game engine project. Or do. There's an argument to be made either Wait a way. So, you, so you're saying we can get ray tracing for Brick Simulator? Yes. <laughs> then again, I'm pretty sure that the most recent version of Brick Simulator that was... Was that Unreal? That Foxy uh, exported just the 3D wasn't it, thing. Was, was, wasn't it Godot? Or? I think it was Godot. A very Godot early 3D? primitive Godot. It wasn't 3D. No, the, no the, the, like, I'm not talking about the first release of uh, Brick Simulator. Not, I'm talking not, about not, the first not person Simulator origin, 3D. Brick Simulator <laughs> minus one. <laughs> I think it was Unreal. But yeah, it, it's... Um, th- there's an argument to be made about... Uh, Securing funds from people who just want to take a share of whatever company. No, Pedro, it was Ledworks. Oh, was it Ledworks? Yeah, it was. was it? Right. Oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Because I, I'm remembering the Haiti Spidey email. Like, never put mm-hmm. me through that bullshit again. I'm like, I didn't put anybody through damn thing, man. I just, like, threw it out there. There you go. Oh. Uh, thank you, Foxy, for putting, <laughs> putting up with Ledworks just to get that up and running. But yeah, there's a. Uh, there's a, a bit of a it's a blog post opinion piece whatever you want to call it about games not needing venture capitalism and uh there there's a disclosure right at the top and a couple of corrections that they made and the TLDR does a fairly good job of explaining it and the game that they decided to use as the like major example is of course Pal World because you can't do a gaming podcast 
in 2024 without talking about Pokemon with guns. Uh, so <laughs> it is, they, they go into detail uh, as to why you shouldn't get venture capital money for a multitude of reasons. But at the same time, and uh, I actually appreciated this very much, uh, they do bring up the fact that, yes, if you are if you are a developer, if you're a more practical person, you don't want to do the marketing. You don't want to do the boring stuff. That's why you pay other people to do it. But how are you going to pay it if your game isn't sold yet? Uh, so you don't have the money to do it. And if you have a marketing company and you're a new up and comer and you, they look at your game and go, we're not interested in that. You need to pay them for them to be interested. So it is very much like the money, the, the whole financial aspect of it is very important. And if you are going to sell off a chunk of your game before it's even out, then yeah, that publisher, investor, venture capital company, whatever, uh, they better make the pay worth it. But you will be selling your product before it's even out and you won't own all of it. <laughs> See, he's a smooth brain bullshit, man. I, I pulled a Chad move. I get epic to get a one year exclusive. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, the the epic exclusive money. It's it's not that one's. I would I would say it's probably better than venture capital <laughs> investments. But eh. well, the the, 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 the article <laughs> does go into detail about like uh, the, where VC comes in and like a lot of high tech is to actually like bootstrap uh, the 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 thing where like I have an idea to make a product to do X we're in games. Most of the time it's like one, one or two people in their rooms. Like uh, they, they bring up pal world or uh Zekers from lethal company as an example. Um, they just made it themselves. So they don't really need that round one seed money to make a prototype or a product to shop around. That is something that happens as a result of the game development process. Um, and so we're, uh, so now where these VC people are coming in and they're saying, well, we're going to help you promote, we're going to help you uh, ramp up, but they don't necessarily have a lot of experience doing that, especially in games. And especially when there are things like uh, crowdfunding, you can go direct to your consumers. There is stuff like Epic, um, there are publishers and like, you know, you know, pu publishers aren't the friendliest fish in the ocean in terms of game development, but you know, they, they are, they are guppies compared to the sharks that are VC, especially once your game needs to start turning a profit. They're like, Oh yeah, here's all this money. Now we need you. Cause we've, we've seen what happened. Look at, uh, look at Uber, look at Twitter, look at all these venture back high tech firms. It's, it's all great at the beginning. And then they start getting real crappy once they start needing to squeeze value out of it. Once, you know, we start need to start making that money back. Well, that is like, uh, another thing to keep in mind, you probably unlike, uh, the list of companies you rattled off have a plan to make money <laughs> at some point. You know, uh, I mean, if you're if your plan is just to get VC funding and like disappear, golden. Um, in case you don't really need VC cash, and I, I've been, we've seen so many small teams, and we're a huge fan of all the you know single person, you know, two, three, four people teams putting out singing and the praise of hollow Knight for years been doing it man that. team cherry doing that uh <laughs> these guys with power world man like they're working in a convenience store man like they're still managing to put out games L lethal companies made by one dude right yeah. now you know grew up playing roblox man and you're like yeah i'm gonna make my own thing and those are always feel-good stories and you know it can happen stardew valley wordle yep mm -hmm. i mean it is possible uh well vampire survivors there, there, and there, there, there's, there's, there's no shortage of, of games we could rattle off as examples. Yeah. Of like, and there's yeah. no shortage of games that took publisher money and took venture, uh, well, maybe not venture capital specifically, but they took money from investors and publishers and whatnot. And then their major uh, um, lawsuits and uh, legal slap fights uh, about who owns the game. Uh, the most recent one that the uh, the court case finally wrapped up was the sinking city mm -hmm. where the developers and the publishers were basically at each other's throats over the rights for the game the developers finally thankfully uh actually won the uh, the rights back so the game had i think they've released the new update that has it is back on steam yeah uh, it, it was already back on steam because um it, with them in control of it, it w yes it, it was still the publisher that had it in control because they succeeded in the 
How was it? Uh, an injunction that uh, basically allowed the game to stay up for the proceedings of the thing. But now that the developer has the rights back, they are in control and they've updated it. But yeah, you don't want to go through that, especially not with a game as big as The Sinking City. And if you do happen to get a runaway success like Pal World, like uh, Lethal Company, mm -hmm. you're out a fairly large chunk of money right off the bat because, hey, you ventured into that particular capital. I mean, if you're if you have a runaway success, like you have negotiation power, ne negotiating power, like you're not going to get fucked. Like as long as you have something remotely competent around you, resembling um, a lawyer, somebody like with you know room temperature IQ. But if you're just starting out, you're one person, and you're like, I kind of got an idea, and you're you know you're going around doing some pitches, and somebody's like, all right, I'll take a risk on this, but we're going to get this and this and this. It's easy for us to be like, nah, bro, don't take that. You know, don't worry about it because we don't know how you're going to react. I mean, I don't know how I'm going to react. Somebody shows up with a dump truck full of money and they're like, hey, you know that idea that you got, that you got that little prototype for that you want to see fleshed out into like this real big open world, whatever you got going on. We're we going to make that star, happen. We want you to star <laughs> in Spice World too, Ben. Leading role. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Show me the dump. Yeah. 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 Just show me the dump truck full of money. Yeah. Like everybody's got a fucking price, man. Um, <laughs> that that's just the reality of it. But again, we've we've shown time and time and again, games to draw the chart get infinitely more expensive the less competent the team or person is. Because uh, you know you can have a game where as a one person game like vampire survivors where the person is effectively full stack you know he's not just the idea person he's he, he can do it he can do the art he can do the programming he can do the publishing get everything done it's basically time then you get the idea person you see the idea person pitching their game on kickstarter all the time they're like going to need three and a half you know three hundred fifty thousand dollars just to get this off the ground i'm like why because i literally have to hire everybody you know because all I have is the idea. You know, I have no functional programming, no art, no marketing, no social, none of that. Like, but I got the idea. That's a lot more expensive. But then again, VC firms tend to stay away from idea people. So because because they are the idea people. They so. are the idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, Do you want to get so trapped that, in that deal? But you might. You know, I don't like just like flat out. Like, you do I mean, what you yeah, got to do, man. Like, if you got to right, pay it, rent, you take that money and don't let anybody yeah, give it, you any it, shit it, for it. Yeah, you, you, you got to make your money. If your fridge is empty, you got you to do what you got to do, right. right? Yep. So, you know, get them on the next one. Get them on the next one. But yeah, it, just be careful because, you know, they're parasites. They're vultures. Like, yeah. And we were talking don't, in the pre-super pre, pre don't, don't, don't make it seem like you, they, you need them because you don't. Is, uh, and that's where VCs are putting their money into publishing right now because they've already figured out like distribution. All, that, that, that market's kind of gone away. So uh, mm -hmm. that's where they're going to try to get you. But... Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe you want to get got. Tell us. Talk to us. Scream in that general direction. Do that. Head over to linkschemecast.com. Hit the contact button. Fill it out. Give me some emails. We'll take a look at it. You know what? Every now and then. Every now and then. We we'll, might read it on the show if it's good. But I had a YouTube comment that I had to sneak into. Now, if you're a patron, post it on the patron post. Guaranteed to get in 100%. We'll talk to you. You're our bosses. YouTube, you never know. See, I, I knew we got some traction on the YouTube video. Let me tell you how this works. We have a YouTube channel, by the way. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Athletics Gamecast. Oh, yeah, old school. Forward slash yeah. Athletics Gamecast. Oh, like, no, no, no at. Oh, man. Oh, no, baby. We, we OG, <laughs> 13 years, man. Um, so a couple people, because it's just, we've been doing video forever. Like, why not? We were talking live. Might as well record it. And we may put it out in uh, YouTube format every now and then. Every now and then, this is rare enough to where it's only happened like two or three times. The algorithm will fuck up, <clears throat> and we'll 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 bubble up somewhere, <laughs> and it'll like start distributing our show for like thirty seconds. It'll start recommending it, and it'll go from like you know we probably get like two, three, four hundred views. And uh, when I I know this is happening, when I start getting. Because I see comments, I get email notifications like, oh, somebody left a comment. And I was like, hey, man, I was like, I'm getting at this with Linux. And, and I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll get back to that. And so I was like, yeah, I like, you know, I run Arch, LOL, but I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. I know something has fucking happened. 
when I get an email and it's a YouTube comment from Olo Hack for Yes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Jordan, what, what, what did this email say that got me well, suspicious? Well, yeah, I, I saw this one too earlier in the week. It's like, yeah, Linux and gaming are like vegan and steak. Just saying, truth hurts, I know, but it still has to be told. So. Oh, man. You got us, man. You got us. Damn. I love, I love that vegan steak, though. It's so delicious. <laughs> it's the, it's the beyond, Where was this the person beyond, 12 beyond years cow. ago <laughs> when this was just starting to become a thing? Who would have saved this so much work? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I would put vegan and arch in the same sentence. But like Varch. Varch, along yeah. with Prius well, and um, the golden varches, yeah, the, the golden varches, <laughs> where, where where you get your vegan burgers from. Yeah, you get the golden power showers. I don't know power yeah. showers. The golden varches. I don't know, man. <laughs> Stay away from the ball pit, jeez, dude. Uh, yeah, it, it, fun hot take, man. Fun hot take. Uh, but from, the, the, from hot from what two thousand and one? This is uh, somebody. Edgy. Somebody too busy glue <laughs> munching on his glue stick or like dry humping his rog ally to realize that like the Steam Deck came out. And I'm like, all of these arguments are invalid in the world where Steam Deck exists. Like the world where the Steam Deck gets positively compared to literally every other handheld that gets released nowadays from companies like Asus, from companies like MSI, from companies like I mean, like we Lenovo. would make a, you know, especially on handheld window gaming joke, but they can't get it working, so we can't really yeah. make that joke. It's like kicking a toddler with progeria or something. It's like, why, why, would, why would you do that? But yes, uh, we, I, I knew we were having some traction when I started seeing derp comments. I'm like, oh, let me go check the stats. It's like, oh, shit, we got like 83% distributions. And we had like, I don't know, like whatever, like 1,300 views or something like that, which is a lot for a show that like, by the way, we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Thank you for watching if you do watch them. <laughs> Up next, Jordan as... Uh, I got yelled at yesterday. Hang on. I, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how this works. Because... We, we we've all done streaming all three of us have a different take on this we have a different appreciation of this show because we all done it <laughs> we know what it's like to be on the other side of the camera now tell me am i right or wrong both of you when you're watching somebody special with like tech shit or some shit that you know you know because every now and then a stream you watch starts getting into shit you know about and they fucking misspeak now you want to be like mm, no, no no here's what you but you think about it you're like yeah i fuck up i miss say shit all the yeah. time but but the thing is is like my line is like but you, but you know what they fucking meant the, right? the, 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 the link and especially when the link to the, the text in question is a present and also being but, shown on screen. i mean when you're watching another streamer like i see that time i was like oh you just misspoke you and i was like of course they just mis i must speak all the I, fucking I, time I, it, it's, it's a running joke in youtube videos right where like people will be like rambling and rambling and stuff and they'll like they'll have the caption over it be like no i was completely fucking wrong talking out of my ass but yeah, like, when, or when, confusing amd with nvidia happens a lot <laughs> yeah. and most of us you know especially if you stream <laughs> you get sympathy you don't even get mad you don't even bother trying to correct yeah. anybody in chat because you know that they know what they're mm. yeah some people can't deal with that shit um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You know, we're, 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 do, we're doing a live show. We get some stuff wrong. Uh, Matthew writes in and says, thanks for covering the new Lutris release. I've only been working on fixing crashes caused by a high DPI mouse. Nothing has been changed regarding displays. I did. I did fuck that up. I'll, 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 I'll cop to that. When we say a game is completely removed, it means it won't show as uninstalled and the playtime won't be kept. This is not related to game saves. Cool. Maybe make that note a little bit more clear on your release note. Blink tag. Bring uh, it back. Marky yeah, Blink. Um, pinning a wine version per game has been a feature long as long as we've supported multiple wine builds. And why was it in a note? Uh, we were no longer. We no longer ship Lutris wine. We ship Wine G by default. It's not about hoping that it stays working. It's about catching regressions fast. Uh, if the Steam client is running, Lutris is enabled to keep track of the playtime. This means Steam games have no playtime on Lutris. This is why the sync exists, to replace non-existent data with its actual data. My divination powers tell me that you have talked about old Woogle in the week show. The latest development version of Lutris now supports it. And, hey, 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 I used my sync powers to see ahead to this part of the show where we talked about it. You <laughs> fucked divination up in my brain so hard I couldn't say it for the entire time you did that. Divination? I was like, yeah, I was like, Div divination? Yeah, oh, you, yeah, that's not what you said, though. Uh, what, 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 what you were I wrong. My brain was like, he's right. 
Uh, I thought you intentionally fucked it up. Did, what, what, what? No, what did I, what did you, I say? It was like Duvenusian or some shit like that. I was like, du, what? Du, du, Duvenusian? <laughs> or some shit. Come, 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 on, come on, baby, do the Duvenusian. It was bad enough where I was like, no, that's... Did, did, wow. <laughs> come, baby. No, no, it turns out I'm just a fucking idiot. <laughs> I, I, I just thought was it wasn't me for once. <laughs> Who'd have thought? I don't know, no. man. <laughs> no, I, listen, man, I'm glad you got the update. And you know what? It's uh, We, we got to go back to it real quick. Uh, it, it's going to kind of flatten things out once everybody has the... Uh, what do I, We, we got to work. We got to workshop all, all, that all, name. All, all Wuggle. Wuggle, Wuggle. <laughs> Ooh, oogie, 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 oogie boogie. <laughs> uh, the let's see the Linux Unified Play. What is it? What's this thing fucking stand for? I, I wanted to go for uh, lupus. <laughs> the Linux Unified Play Proton. Is Linux it? Unified Proton. Proton. Win- Windows Linux Game Launcher. Um, Windows Game Launcher. <laughs> yeah, that's <what> undulating. <laughs> Unified <laughs> Linux Wine Game Launcher. Superstar. Apparently. Yeah. Somebody once told me the world's gonna roll me. Somebody once told me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every, every, every time we refer to it, we just have to sing the entirety of All Star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. The, 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 there's the uh, the homework for the people listening to the show. Uh, let us know of a better acronym for the unified uh, Windows gaming <laughs> Linux <laughs> launching. Egwin, <laughs> listen. I, I will. Uh, I, I will have. A, I'll, I'll have a chat and I'll see if oh, we can oh, uh, get oh. the licensing for Frank. You know, that, <laughs> honestly, that, that's good. If you just call it wiggle, it's like, yeah, just wiggle it. Wiggle, wiggle it, it and it'll work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wiggle it. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Oh, you dude. Can have, um, you can have that one for free. But yeah, coming back to that, like, it, it's really just going to, like, be like a little, like, side feature thing once everything has this integrated in it. Because everything's just going to launch. You're like, oh, which one do I looks prettiest more? Yeah. Which, which, which one do I like better? Yeah. I, I just want to file more bug reports on Lutris, just to, just to make Strider's life more miserable. Can you make the button a circle? Be, be like, <laughs> L- L- Lutris added some like weird spots to my laundry. I don't know what's going on. I upgraded to the newest version of Lutris, and now my dog is a cat. No, I can't catch my socks. <laughs> no, no, now I'm actually finding all matched pairs of socks in my um, in my washing machine. It's an yeah. SCP now. <laughs> <laughs> it, I upgraded Lutris and it doesn't plug to my toilet. Fucking Canada with their battery powered toilets. You, you don't have the UPS it's on cold. the toilet. They gotta have the heated seats, yeah, man. I, I have the uninterruptible pooping supply, which is me. I am the I am the UPS. No, okay, under and over if we did a search for like bathroom like safe uninterruptible power supplies just <laughs> I'm, oh i'm sure for like jacuzzis and shit there's, yeah, there's yeah. gotta be like apc's yeah. got like a little side <laughs> hustle of like yeah, yeah stuff that you can just wee all over and it'll work just fine <laughs> you know on that bombshell it isn't <laughs> well, let's cue the music you can always find us kicking off around 8 30 eastern standard moon time right here on twitch right here on youtube and right here wherever else i don't know why you're watching it live but Come say hi in the live show. Got a bunch of people show up. And yes, I, I do read the YouTube chat too. And every now and then Pedro does as well. Ha. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm Vin Stone. On Zitter, I'm Vin on our Mastodon Federated line of time. Just mass.linuxgamecast.com. And of course, Vin on uh, Blue Sky, if that's still around. Because like, I have it. It's just, it's not doing much. I'm kind of poking it with a stick. and like, be interesting or something. I'm Jordan. If you wiggle me, stuff will happen. You can wiggle me on Mastodon at Frojo at Mass at LinuxGameCast.com, at Frojo at BlueSky.social, BlueSky.app, and at The Burning Fool on Twitter. Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle. And if you're into server room golden showers, uh, maybe <laughs> don't follow me on Mastodon. <laughs> Are, are, are you peeing on people in the server room, Pedro? The original gold source. <laughs> I, I, I was still on the whole APC that you can be on thing. It's like, yeah, no, it's just server room, APC, power supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, but no, don't, don't follow don't me on Mastodon if you're into that. Uh, it, it, it will just be terribly disappointing for everyone else. It's unaccounted for at 
Mass.LinuxGameCast.com. We're going to roll some <laughs> mothering credits, but I want to thank KR Duck, who just became our latest executive producer. And of course, Dak, right here in chat. I saw Dak floating around as a new sea monster. Now, let's do it. Hit that button, Frank. Oh, and apparently, back it from last week. Thank you so much, back it. Uh, he's back been it. watching for a while. <laughs> yeah. He, he, not, he not, didn't not come in for the, uh, the cars. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got to thank all the advisors, mouth, yeah. Omega, Sartharin, <laughs> and these whores, Barbara M, Scott Michaud, uh, Tom Cass, Mike G, Drummo, Tomaj, Hakeem, Ishep, uh, Ian, David, Haplo, and KR Ducky, and our little Nicky fans, Super Desto, Eggy, and Empty. Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin, Darkwing, System T, Dancing Joe, DeCresney, Kim, Minogi, One Art of the Sea Monsters, and Nova, Chad, Romeo, Renee, Leonardo, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.Wad, Stephen B, Beck, Turnover, Zeno. Breathe, boy, uh, breathe. Uh, boy, <laughs> breathe. Hello, <laughs> and uh, a few other people are. Fine, uh, upstanding <laughs> cannibals. We got Carl, Mike, Earth, Aaron, Linux, New World, Is, Nicholas, John, Eshep, Game of Tron, Nido, and DSN, Joe, Aromatic. Dev and Kai Jorai. If you want to get on that beautiful list, patreon.com forward slash Linux Schemecast, head over to linuxschemecast.com. Click that support button. These Yahoo's got Yahoo, yeah, Yahoo wish lists. I, I, on I have a Yahoo email account. Yeah. Pick them up, something, <laughs> send them a letter, and make them read it right here on this show. <laughs> Until next week, beautiful party people. Dynafire. Bye. A toodaloo. <laughs> Toodaloo. <laughs> five dudes.